Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video and today we're gonna review another 3D printer. This time is 3D Tech iFast. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys and thanks for tuning in. This is iFast from 3D Tech and it's a quite impressive and very capable 3D printer. This machine comes fully enclosed with an active chamber heating that goes up to 60 degrees Celsius, which makes it perfect for printing any high temperature filaments like polycarbonate, ABS, nylon, and etc. This 3D printer has direct drive extruder with automatically switchable hot ends, so that you can print models in a dual color without worry that inactive nozzle will ever collide with the model. The size of this 3D printer is impressive. The external dimensions are 71 by 51 by 67 centimeters and it weighs more than 32 kilograms which is the most heaviest and the most stable desktop 3d printer that I ever tested the build volume is also increased from previous model and now it's 330 by 250 by 320 millimeters which is very useful print size for any makers out there when it comes to design ifs looks very nice and clean like a cube the printer comes in white and black color, with a large transparent door, which opens 180 degrees, giving you nice and easy access to your prints. On top of the printer there is a magnetic removable top cover, and place for two white spools of filament, with a filament runout detection sensors. The side panels are made of injected molded plastic, and under the plastic panels, the iFast has a metal frame, which is incredibly robust and heavy, and when you see this 3D printer in person, you don't get the feeling that underneath this plastic shell there is a hidden steel metal frame. On the metal frame, there are wide linear rails for every axis, including the dual Z axis. So the movements on the iFast are very stable, precise, and smooth. The heat bed on the iFast are made of 5mm thick aluminum plate, and it's packed with a high temperature tolerant magnets that holds this steel plate very strong in a place. Thanks to this industrial design, the iFast is the most stable 3D printer that I ever tested. And the auto level on this machine is no needed. Once you level the iFast, you don't have to think about it for a very long time. Thanks to dual 350W 24V power supply, with a total output of 700W, the heat bed on this machine warms up reasonably fast, consider how large and thick actually is. A removable top cover on the iFast traps the heat inside the enclosure, which is great for printing ABS and other type of high temperature filaments. On the front side of the iFast we have a large door and a touch LCD screen. Right next to the screen we have illuminated power on off button, while on the right side next to the handle there is a USB socket. On the left and right side we have a huge thunder sign, handle, vent holes and a few warning information. While on the back of the printer, there are two spooled holders that retracts, place for dry filament feed case, enclosure cooling fan, AC socket with a fuse, the main on-off switch, and the LAN internet port. In terms of printer controls, the iFast comes with a 5-inch touch LCD screen. The screen itself has a nice resolution, it's bright, responsive, and it have a good weaving angles. The software interface on this printer is a simple and straightforward. The icons on the screen are nice and big, with plenty of space between them. Navigation through the menu is without lag, and everything is where it should, but there is a few interesting things. For example, while you print, you can turn on or off enclosure lights. Set the print to turn off after the printing is finished, set control to enclosure fans, set desirable chamber heating, turn on or off filament sensor, and before each print, you can see the small preview of the model, which is very useful. The iFast 3D printer have also a Wi-Fi camera inside the enclosure, so that you can monitor printing process. The camera is 1080p and it works fine. You can switch it to day and night mode, choose different resolution, take a picture or video directly to your smartphone, and etc. In terms of unboxing experience, it was a straightforward. The printer comes in a secured shipping box, but make sure that you have somebody to help you with the lifting, as the whole package is quite large, and it weighs around 42 kilograms. 
since I was alone in a moment, the easiest way for me was to cut the shipping styrofoam on the side and free the printer that way. Now since the unboxing is a very similar with my last Chidi Tech 3D printer video, I will not go in too much detail here, but I will tell you that with the printer you're gonna receive internet cable, power cable, nice and sharp spatula, spool holders, tools, 1 kg of PLA filament, you're gonna get the dry box that you can install on the back of the printer. Then we have a box with some tools, fuses, extra nozzle, USB stick with a softer and the useful info. Next there is a glue stick, a nice colorful user manual with a startup guides, troubleshooting with the frequently asked questions, a lot of useful information really. It will tell you how to unbox the printer, how to set it up, how to use the slicer, how to print, pretty much everything to get you started. Very beginner friendly. And the most interesting is that out from the box you will get the dual high temperature extruder, or the complete print head if you will, with the cooling fans, all metal hot ends and hardened steel nozzles, so that you can print abrasive filament and the high temperature filaments up to 300 degrees celsius. This thing is great for nylon, polycarbonate, carbon fiber and other high temperature filaments. Here you can see that clever switching design and how the printer switches from one nozzle to another. Very cool. This printer comes with a two types of build plate, the build tech and the PI plate. This is a PI steel build plate and it's my favorite. This type of print surface is fantastic and you can use it with many types of filaments such as PLA, PTG, TPU, ABS, wood and etc. For filaments like nylon, polycarbonate, carbon fiber, you will need to use the black build plate, flip it and add the supply glue stick. Regardless which build plate you use, removing prints from it it's very easy. Just bend it in opposite direction and the prints will pop out or you can let the print to cool down and it will automatically self-release. And now let's talk about the print quality. The print quality on the iFast in short is awesome, if not the best that I've seen so far on any desktop 3D printer. This printer comes with a chili slicer and even with a standard print profile and the stock print settings I was getting pretty good print results. On the first 3D benches that I printed I was getting some stringing since the default print temperature was set a bit too high for this red filament. So I lowered the print temperature until I got clean results in a stringing test. And then I print 3D Benji once again with a supplied red PLA filament. And this time the print results was awesome. The overhands, the surface finish, everything was great and I personally think that this is the best 3D Benji that I ever printed. Now after that I got my desired print quality, I went with some bigger and more complicated model. So I sliced the boost of a dead pool and I start to print. For those who wonder about the noise level, I will tell you that the iFast is a very quiet 3D printer. I'm getting readings of around 45 decibel, which is very good score for a 3D printer. And it will not bother you at all if you are in the same room during printing. Later on during printing, I checked the model a few times. And I already saw that this model will look fantastic in the end. And indeed, that was the case. The print quality of the Deadpool came out perfect. The level of details, the surface finish and the quality of the print was fantastic. To save time, I print this model in 0.2mm layer height. So keep in mind that this print can be printed even better, if you need to. For the next test print, I went with the full z-axis height and I scaled these beautiful ways up to 320mm. And I printed in a bronze PLA filament. To save electricity, I set the heat bed to turn off after the first layer and I close the top cover. In the end the vase came out fantastic and the layers bonded so nice that you cannot even see that this vase is 3D printed. Next I decided to try out dual color mode, but first I print the calibration test G code that was on USB stick, just to check if extruders are in the alignment. The print came out nice and no adjusting was necessary, so I start the printing of the test cube in white and red color. During printing it was very interesting to watch how the print head switches from one extruder to another. For this dual color print I use the O's shield to see what results I will get. The print results in the end was very nice and my first dual color test print 
came out pretty much perfect. Both colors was blended nicely together and this half cube looks great. Nice. Next one, I slice the model of Muay statue in a dual color. And I start to print, again using the old shield. But I made one mistake. I forget to run quick stringing test for the second nozzle, as the white PLA filament that I installed had a different melting point compared to the red filament. So the print results was not the best, as the temperature for the second nozzle was a bit too high, and I got some stringing on a white color. For my next print, I lowered the temperature on the second nozzle, again I used the O's shield, and the dual colored 3D Benji came out almost perfect. The print quality was very good and the colors blended very nicely. The only color leak that I got on this print was here on the Z seam, where the next layer starts as I left the slicer settings on default. To achieve even better print quality, I print one more 3D Benji, this time in 0.15mm layer height, and I set Z seam to be on a back left corner. This time the print came out great, and the print quality was fantastic. Nice. Now I decided to test some bigger models in a dual color, and I print the model of the dragon glass, which also came out very nice. This is a very interesting model, and it have a very cool design. The level of details are good, and the colors blended very nice with almost no leak. So far, so good. Alright, that was a dual color printing in PLA filament. But what about printing ABS in two color? To test it, I first sliced with the Benji and I installed white and blue ABS filament. To minimize filament waste, I decided to use smaller size prime tower, and for those who are interested about the temperatures inside the enclosure, I have placed a small temperature sensor inside the enclosure and I'm getting readings around 60 degrees Celsius. With a small prime tower, the filament waste was minimum, and the 3D Benji in ABS turned out surprisingly good for the first try. Of course, there is a room for some improvement here and there, but overall, very nice results. I like it a lot. The next print in a dual color ABS was the Muay statue, and I got very good print results. Almost perfect. Nice color blending without too much leaking. Smooth print surface. Overall, very nice print quality. Next one, I start to print Octopus in a dual color, and it turned out pretty good as well. Only mistake that I made was a bit too fast print speed, and I should use more layers on the top surface. Overall, pretty good quality for the ABS, with zero warping and no crack layers. Now for my next dual color print in ABS, I chose this beautiful ways, which will be perfect to test out long printing time with the ABS filament. Printing time for this model was over 24 hours, and the model came out with no crack layers and with a perfectly straight bottom. This is a very nice and strong print and very good print quality. Few more fine touches in a slicer settings for this model and it will be perfect. I like design of this model and it looks so nice in this blue and white combination. Nice. Next I print out few more test prints in ABS. For example this handle for our extra summer fridge and a bigger handle for our extra freezer in a basement. Both prints turn out perfectly straight and strong with zero warping and thanks for the active chamber heating, you don't even need to have a room heating on where you're printing, which is awesome. I also test out PTG filament. First I print out a few pot saucer for my home tomatoes in a blue PTG filament. They all turn out great. Then I switch to the red PTG filament and I print this screw and bolt model, who also turn out nice and strong. And then I start to print out model of the baby grot with the same red PTG filament. This print came out perfect, with all small details, with a great surface finish, a beautiful printed model. Next up, I test out TPU filament, both hard TPU and the real flexible one. With the hard TPU filament, I print out the model of the bolt and nut, which turns out great. And then I switch to very flexible black TPU filament, 
and I print these damper legs for the iFast, who also turn out great. TPU was not a problem for this machine, even with the print speed set to 50 mm a second. Now for the last test print, I decided to try out combination of PLA with a PVA filament as a support. For those who are not familiar with the PVA filament, this filament dissolves in water and it's a mostly used as a support to print models that requires heavy support or models with the moving parts that would be impossible to print otherwise. Pretty cool stuff. After that I dissolved PVA filament in water, the print results was pretty good. And the design of this model is awesome. I like it a lot. And now, the final words. Well guys, after that I spent more than a few months with this machine, I can say for sure that this is the most capable, the most reliable and the most impressive 3D printer that I ever had. With this impressive size, industrial design, solid build quality and dual aromatic extruders, this 3D printer can print pretty much anything in a superb print quality. But nothing is perfect and here are the few cons that I came across during my time with this machine. The first one is the odd position of the USB port which is next to the door handle. The USB stick that comes with the printer are sticking too much out, making it easy to break it or to stop printing process in the middle of the print. So I use my nano USB drive instead. That solved this issue. The second cons are the camera inside the enclosure. The image quality and the frame rate are not the best that I saw and since this camera is a third party accessory, it's not connected with the printer in any way. So there is no way to start or stop the printing process remotely. This camera is meant to be used for monitoring purpose only, which is not the best implementation that I saw, but it does the job. And the third cons are these open spaces on the bottom of the closure, which leads to power supplies and electronics underneath. The problem here is that the all leftovers from the prints, supports and small filament pieces are falling down in these openings. Some are getting under the printer and some are getting stuck inside, which can be good. To solve this potential problem, you can be more careful when cleaning the enclosure or you can print one of these grills and close these spaces. I will leave links in the video description. Other than that, the iFast 3D printer is a fantastic machine. It is the most reliable and the best 3D printer that I ever owned. The iFast is a real working horse, which is built to last. And I can recommend it to anyone who are looking to invest into advanced 3D printer with a superb print quality that works as it should beautifully every time. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful. Link of the iFast 3D printer you can find in the video description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave the comment. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.